everybody and welcome back to Movie Files. As promised in my spoiler free review of Glass, I said I want to do a spoiler review, kind of a spoiler discussion more or less. I haven't done one of these in a while. I think honestly, just kind of thinking on it, I think the last one I did was for Infinity War, uh, which I did, I mean, Morgan and I did our spoiler free review, then we, I, I think I did a, like a 30 minute video, just kind of what I thought of all the reveals, what I hope to see in the future of the MCU, so it's been a while since I've done one of these, so in this video, I'm just going to touch on all the major plot points, all the details that we got, things that worked for me more in detail, things that didn't work for me more in detail, as you can see from my review, I gave it a 4 out of 5, so I really enjoyed this film, but again, I want to make this video to kind of touch more on the spoiler aspect of this movie, so before I get into that, I want to welcome all those that are new to Movie Files. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button as well as hit that notification bell. So once I were making new videos, you get a little uh, notification saying, hey, Movie Files has made another movie uh, review. Movie Files has made another trailer reaction. So definitely hit that notification bell so you can stay updated with all that content that we give to you guys. So with that, let's talk about Glass, the spoilers. Kind of recapping the movie. The film starts off. We see uh, Edwin, who I just love in this movie, uh, you know, kind of talking to the cheerleaders that have been kidnapped. This film takes place three weeks after Glass. Um, so he kidnaps these girls. He's telling the beast is on its way. He's coming. He's coming. You know, I love that moment. And then we're kind of brought into the world of Unbreakable. We see what David Dunn has been up to. We see that him and his son are kind of... As many people have kind of compared it to Batman Oracle, uh, Joseph's in his ear telling him, you know, hey, Dad, there's some stuff going on over here. He's he's the overseeker of Philadelphia. So we kind of see what they've been up to the last, uh, you know, 19 years, which I thought was a really cool kind of way of getting us up to speed to what he's been up to. We see, uh, you know, David with the, uh, you know, recommendation of son not, to, you know, take a day off or two, Dad. We're going to find the horde, but take a day off or two. He doesn't do that. He looks for uh, the the, uh, the horde, uh, a.k.a. the beast. In doing so, he runs. He's he's going on a walk. He bumps into uh, Edwin. He sees where they're at. They have this really great standoff. Also, let me backtrack. There's a pretty cool cameo with M9 in this film. Uh, it's a really cool cameo, in my opinion, because it touches on two characters, or well, one character in, in both the movies unbreakable and split you know breakable m night plays the guy at you know at the stadium uh he makes a reference to that and also he's a security guard in split and he says to joseph hey i want some, some some cameras because some people were murdered in my apartment building which calls back to split so i thought that was cool but Going back to the timeline, the story, you know, we see this standoff between David Dunn as the overseeker in the Horde, uh, as the Beast. And I love that moment, that scene. It's like two titans going head to head. I thought it was really well shot and really some really cool action that we got. First time we saw like kind of hand to hand combat per se, because in Unbreakable, we see David choking out that serial killer, but nothing, you know, there's really no combat action in Split. Obviously, we got some action, but not like hand to hand action. So I thought it was really cool that we get that. The battle was cool. We see how they end up getting captured by uh, a doctor uh, staple you know they jump out of the, they fall out of the window she tells them she knows who they are and brings them to the institution uh, which you know we get all that stuff there which to me like I said in my non spoiler review the first act is more of a split movie to me just because how it opens. The second act is definitely more of a uh, unbreakable movie because it gets a lot of dialogue. We get those personal moments in the institution. We obviously see what Gla Mr. Glass has been up to. He's been sedated as they, they think that they sedated him, but he's been, as we see in the movie, has been revealed. He's been hiding his medicine, which was a little weird that when he opened up, he revealed it was like, to me, it looked like it was like a month's worth of you know pills that they thought that were sedated him. But anyway, that's a little nitpick. But we see that he's been playing them the whole time. Uh, you know, a lot of people were complaining like, well, how did he know that you know David Dunn and the Horde, you know, were gonna come here? You know, obviously they show in the film that he's been sneaking in and out of his room. Uh, you know, he's probably been using the internet. You know, he, he's I think he created you know little forum groups online. Uh, so I think that he he's a smart man. He knew what was going on. He knew when Dr. Sable, whenever she came into the facility, he probably looked at the notes, overheard the guards, because again, they thought he was sedated, so he's probably listening in. So we catch up to Mr. Glass, see what he's been up to. We see Casey, which in my non-spoiler review, I kind of touched on. I thought I love Anna Taylor Joy, but I thought she was just so underutilized. We see that she's in high school. It's been three me three weeks removed from uh split. And to me, she has this foster family, and she's just she she was a her character obviously when she was a young girl she's obviously she was molested as it was implied in the in split and she's just been it just has a horrible life so I would assume what M Night was saying was she's a girl that has been able to mask 
her her pain. So I and, and I can see that, but again, I just thought her character should have it didn't really dive into where she's at mentally. You know, she obviously wanted to go back to talk to Kevin. They had that moment, which was really cool. Uh, you know, when she's just like, hey, you know, Dr. Stable tell her, you know, you need compassion to bring out, you know, we want to help these people out. But again, I thought Casey was just kind of underutilized. Long story short, we see, you know, Mr. Glass knows that David and, uh, you know, Kevin, uh, the beast is there. He infiltrates the whole situation, manipulates it all. We get the, you know, the whole idea of the tower. He wants the world to see the superheroes, which I thought was really cool because in superhero movies, we get that big standoff. We get Infinity War. We get the Battle of Wakanda. We get the battle uh, on Titan, you know, with Venom. We get the battle on the, uh, the space station, you know, with... Spider-Man into Spider-Verse, you know, all these grand finales, but I love that M. Night's like, no, this isn't that type of superhero movie. We're going to just fight in a parking lot. This is what it is. But at the same time, it plays into Eliza's plan. The cameras were all placed there. I thought that was great. So the showdown was really cool. Talking a little bit about the twist. So um, the big twist, number one, you know, kind of going into some things that I liked and didn't like about the big twist, and I'll kind of touch on some other things. So number one, we find out that, uh, and I'm looking at my notes here because I, I I don't want to miss anything. So we find out, which is really cool. I, I wish I wrote this guy's name down. In the weeks leading to Glass, I've been watching a lot of videos. I watched the movies, and I think that was so beneficial of watching Unbreakable, Split, and then going into Glass. I watched them literally within 24 hours. I watched both of those films, and then I went to Glass, and it, it, just, it just made the experience so much better for me personally. It was emotional for me when we find out. You know, when obviously, and I'll touch on this, when David dies, you know, David Dunn dies and you have that moment when he tells him shush, you know, and Unbreakable. I thought that was a really powerful moment. But anyway, kind of going into some things that, uh, you know, that worked for me in that that finale is, you know, the twist is we find out that, and, and again, I'm, I'm all over the place, but I watched a video on YouTube. This really, this guy who has a huge channel. I wish I wrote his name down because it was a great video. He had mentioned that it would be interesting if, what if, uh, Kevin's dad was on that train that was derailed and unbreakable. It was a it was a quick thing that he kind of mentioned, but and this was like a month before the movie came out, so he hadn't seen the movie, but it was a theory that he came up with, and I'm like, that would be pretty interesting. And lo and behold, that was our first main twist that Kevin Wendell Crumb's dad, Mr. Crumb, was on the train. Obviously, it was mentioned that his dad wanted to get a therapist to kind of help his crazy-ass mom who's been torturing him, but he was on that train, which was derailed. That was a really solid twist because a lot of people were complaining, oh, this is a, the title is Glass, you know, but they, some people, some critics, some people I know uh, saying that, well, Mr. Glass doesn't really do that much per se, but I think it's the complete opposite. I think he's a pivotal character in this movie. Obviously, he, as that reveal shows, he is responsible for creating the Overseeker, for creating the Beast. And if it wasn't because of his actions, terrible actions, but if it wasn't because if it wasn't for what he did, we would never have these two characters. And he says that to uh, Kevin and, and the Beast. He says that to, to the Beast because at that point they're teaming up and everything. But I, I, I like that reveal. That was a really cool twist to me. Uh, and, and again, I love the showdown that we didn't, that in my show, I'm like, no, we're not going to go to the tower and have this big standoff and people, you know, big fighting scenes. We're going to take it to the parking lot. I really love that. Um, some things that also worked for me in that big twist was the actual reveal that Sarah Paulson, you, you kind of saw it coming. Uh, but Sarah Paulson was, she's not a villain per se, but she's a part of this organization that they never really mention. I don't think they say a name or they have a name for them, but they look like the goddamn Illuminati. <laughs> like I, that was, that was kind of a silly part to me where every time they meet, they have to meet in public places at restaurants and, you know, they're like pretending to have conversations. And once whoever's not part of the organization leaves and they're like, okay, let's have our meetings. Like, why not just go to like a secret hideout that doesn't require you to be in public? But I don't know. It was just kind of weird. But anyway, we find out that Sarah Paulson is kind of the, the I wouldn't say she's a leader, but she's someone that has compassion for these superheroes and villains. She wants to convince these people that they're not superheroes or villains. Uh, and if she can't convince them, their, their methods are to kill them, which is interesting. Uh, again, I don't know why they can't just capture them and maybe put them in kind of a, you know, like we got in uh, Captain America Civil War and also in the comics, you know, they have that 
isolated kind of place where they put super villains in a super maxed out type of situation. I don't know why they couldn't just do that. But anyway, their thing is we're going to try to humanize them, convince them they're not superheroes, convince them they're not villains. They've been doing this for 10,000 years or whatever. So I like that aspect. That was pretty cool, that twist. So the two twists that we got so far in the finale worked for me. The part that really kind of didn't sit with me well in that finale, I have to say, is our characters die. I mean, I, sure, villains, super, villains die. I, I imagine Blast is going to die because he served his purpose. His message was, I want to get the word out there that superheroes exist, supervillains exist. He did his job. His storyline, his arc wrapped up perfectly for me. But I didn't see the need for Kevin. You know, he has that moment with, uh, you know, Anna Taylor-Joy at the end. I didn't see the need for him to die. Uh, I really would have... Again, I knew that this was going to end the trilogy, but the way M. Night kind of leaves it off is like they could do a fourth one if they wanted to. Who knows the future? I don't think that these characters will come back because obviously they're dead. But, you know, I didn't like that he killed off, uh, you know, Kevin Wendell Crumb and also David. I don't know why David had to die, um, honestly, um, because the idea of them want to humanize these characters, David was a good guy. If you're looking at them as superheroes and supervillains, why not just have them a part of your organ? I don't know. It was just, it just, that, that was the part that just didn't really, again, let me know in the comments if you guys saw this organization, like the idea of it was cool because you see that in, in super, uh, you know, this movie was to me a, 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 a really great comic book, a love for the comic book type of movie. It showed appreciation to the ideas of the mytholo mythology that we get in comic books, but that group was just kind of weird, like the, the decisions they made. But anyway, I don't know why David had to die, honestly. And it was a, it was a sad moment. But again, like the guy that was dumping him into water, again, that's his kryptonite. But it's just like the guy that was doing that. Is just, it was just that scene was just kind of weird that all three of them died. We see, you know, Elijah and his mom having a moment, David and his son having a moment, Casey and the Beast having a moment. It was just again, like I said in my in my non spoiler review, that was the fifteen percent just didn't really sit sit well to me that our favorite characters just died. You know, again, I can see Elijah fine, but the David and 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 uh, uh, Kevin's character character. I don't know why they had to die. But anyway, kind of wrapping up this video. I don't want to make this a 30-minute explanation and everything. I'm going to touch on some little things. But, you know, the things I enjoyed from this movie, again, I like where M. Night kind of brought in all the worlds, you know, kind of going up top. The Beast, again, James McAvoy was great. He was let loose in this film as the Beast and all the 20 characters that we saw. I thought that worked well. Um, some things that also worked well for me, again, I like the twist in the film. Other than that, you know, the ending of them killing off our main characters, uh, as well as that kind of not explaining that organization too well. Um, you know, some other things that worked for me was the idea of bringing in these worlds that we didn't know were going to come together. I thought that was handled well. Uh, again, I thought that Mr. Glass arc was done, handled pretty well as well. Um, the M. Night, again, that, that cameo was pretty cool. Uh, the twists and turns work. The, the, the universe that they built, again, world building. Again, I don't think that we'll ever get in another movie in this uh, East Trail 177 franchise, but I thought that the universe that they kind of created from what Mr. Glass did was set up perfectly. Uh, kind of getting some things that didn't work for me in detail. Um, this film was made, I think, for like nine to ten million dollars, and it kind of shows that points. Again, I didn't need that big show off, but there were like, you know, we were just kind of confined to the institution, which is a callback to Split because we were confined to the, the zoo, you know, in the basement. But I thought that it, they could have done more within the landscape of Philadelphia and had a little bit more things to do outside the institute. So that aspect, just kind of, I guess, budget restrictions uh, was something that didn't sit too well with me. Um, the idea of Sarah Paulson's character, again, I thought that that was a weaker point to the film of them not giving her much to do or explaining her, her background was her convincing them after one conversation that they're not superheroes and villains didn't really work for me because this is like David Dunn, he's been doing this for 19 years and he has this conversation with the woman of explaining, oh, I, you know, um, she was saying that the things that he did is, you know, a, a, a people can do and what she was saying to the bees like bending bars oh I was able to bend it it was just like it didn't sit well to me like her explaining to them like you know who you guys are again the idea of society telling you yo you're not this you're this I like that theme but it's just like these particular characters especially David he's been doing this for 20 almost 20 years it's like dude you know you're a superhero you know you have unbelievable strength you you bend bars you you know you you lifting weight I mean that part didn't work for me um 
other things that didn't work. Again, I didn't think the supporting characters were handled that well. Um, and, and but that was just really you know kind of touching on spoilers that those are some things that worked, didn't work for me. Uh, again, I really enjoyed this film, guys. Um, I thought that this was a great follow-up to, to Split, great follow-up to Unbreakable. Again, I prefer Split more than Unbreakable, so it kind of answered that kind of what happens next versus Unbreakable. Again, I thought that M. Night did a good job of bringing in these two worlds, but I definitely would say it's more of a Split sequel than a Glass sequel, which worked for me. Uh, James McAvoy is great. I can't wait to see what, what M. Night does with his next set of films, whether it be in the horror realm or... I don't know, maybe maybe M. Night does a comedy. You know, all his films have a little bit of comedy in them, more so, more than others. But I would love to see what he does next. Um, overall, again, I gave it a four out of five. I think it's definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of this franchise, regardless of what the critics are saying, regardless of the cinema score uh, or the uh, Rotten Tomatoes score from the critics. Go check it out, guys. I recommend it. Let me know in the comments below once you've seen the movie. Let me know all your thoughts. You know, what worked for you? What didn't work for you? Uh, did you enjoy the twist? Did you not enjoy the twist? Uh, just let me know in the comments, guys. I love, uh, you know, I always respond to them. I always kind of, you know, I don't just say, oh, thanks for watching or whatever. I, I kind of get a little dialogue. So I always love the, the comments below. So definitely comment your thoughts. Uh, and, and there you have it. That's my spoiler discussion. Um, I, I really enjoyed this film and, and I can't wait to own it. So like this video, share this video, subscribe to our page if you haven't already. Follow us on all of our social media accounts. It's in the, the description below. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We have a Facebook. We're on Stardust. We're on, you know, all the uh, letterbox. We're all this stuff. We love talking films. I love talking films with you guys, TV, trailers. So definitely subscribe to this channel. Follow us on our social media accounts. Definitely check out our other content. Keep an eye out for more content coming pretty soon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one.